Hi, everyone. Welcome to Healing Wednesdays and the Circle of Twelve. I am Lee Carroll. And I'm Monica Morani. And if you've looked at our schedule, you're probably wondering, my goodness, how on earth can they be in two places at once? Because right now we're in Egypt. We're with the pharaohs. We're at pyramids and doing all kinds of fun things in the Nile. <laughs> so how can we be here? Exactly. Well, obviously, this particular program is pre-recorded, and we did that specifically so that we can come to you fresh every single Wednesday with the good programs, even though occasionally we're out of the country. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense because good. it's all in the now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Healing Wednesday in the now. Every Wednesday evening of the year, we come together with special guests, questions, answers, discussions, meditations, and of course, cry channeling. Well, this is our once a month free program for YouTube subscribers um, and also, of course, for our members, but YouTube subscribers in particular, welcome. Um, we also welcome, of course, our um, subscribers to the uh, Circle of Twelve. And also for anybody joining us for the first time anywhere on the planet. We, we, <laughs> there's a lot of places on the planet who watch this. So whatever it looks like right now, folks, if you're on YouTube watching me, I want you to understand you right now are on the only official and real Cryon YouTube channel. Now, there are a few other Cryon channels on YouTube that are treating my work with very high integrity and respect, and I want to thank them very much. It's very compassionate and beautiful. And then there are many who are doing it with ads, just for the money, hoping that you will be watching and be fooled. Just be aware of that. So just remember, if you had ads, it's for money. And it's not authorized, no matter what the name of the channel says, even if it has my picture there, it was that ads, not authorized. Special welcome right now to the members of the Circle of Twelve who receive one of these programs every single week of the year. Now, if you're not a member but follow the Circle of Twelve on YouTube, this is your 20th free program. Thank you very much. Um, it's just 20 programs. It's a great. However, if you're a member, this is the 73rd program. Just, uh, you know, kind of gives you perspective. All members receive access to every Healing Wednesday program we've ever done. The library keeps growing and building all the time. And, of course, also the YouTube library right here is the same. It's building one a month. This library never expires for you, and if you want to watch these programs, you can as long as you wish. So YouTube subscribers, take a look at some of these great programs from the last year in the playlist for some very prominent guests. And for our Circle of Twelve members, I want to just remind you that there's a comprehensive index where you can find the speakers who are on, the subject that channeling was given and the Circle of Twelve experience. It's all part of our promise to make this as easy for you to navigate as possible. Now, if you're not a subscriber but you'd like to be, we would love to welcome you into our beautiful community of subscribers. And it's so easy. You just go to cryonmasters.com and you can find out how you can just sign up and have the benefit of this program every Wednesday. The replays don't have any of the live stream issues that some of you might be experiencing if you have poor internet. And if you want to experience it with a live chat, that is just so worthwhile because the chat is just filled with a loving community. However, you then have the ability to watch the replay anytime you want, and it is a solid video replay that you can watch. So, we are now into the special we are. E the section. We are. This is <laughs> that people look forward to. We do a question and answer every time we come onto the show, and people have found it very valuable, and we actually find it valuable hearing your questions and we want to go to this first question it comes from Ellen Ellen is in Vancouver Canada and she is saying 
I am deeply affected emotionally when I hear about animal abuse, poaching, experimentation, or mistreatment of any kind. What can I do to ease this pain? And clearly, Ellen, this is also something that touches my heart because for many years I worked in the national parks and it would grieve me so much to learn about the loss of so many species that have become extinct and then all of those problems that you mentioned. It's We're empathic as light workers. So, Lee, how can she ease her heart at these horrible things that continue to go on? Well, Ellen, you and many others, uh, as Monica says, feel this. I, I think it comes... Um, more and more for those who are sensitive and uh, they're, they're, they're actually receiving more uh, compassionate personalities. It's very difficult for us to unsee something or unknow it. So to help ease the pain of these things for any of us, we have to start seeing it in a way that crying tells us will help. Part of the issue, of course, is that we can't do anything about it. We see these things and we, we just hurt, you know. Um, crime tells us that we can actually do something and that if more of us all do it together, it helps. And it helps us and it helps also the situation. I answered a question a while ago about how we can develop compassionate action. I even told a story about what happened when I was young with my sister. And I'm not going to repeat that story again. It was uh, done in the Circle of Twelve. Actually, I think one of the channels. But when I was distraught over something, I had witnessed, my sister showed me how we both could do something about it. Ah, that was in a question, I think, that we had in the membership, uh, one of the programs. We, we stopped uh, what we were doing at that point in time, my sister and I, and she prayed for a peaceful solution. I think I was about 14 at the time. It was very impactful and gave compassion and peace to those who were involved. We actually did something about it. That's how we felt. Uh, this is called compassionate action. Uh, you see something you can't do anything about, which hurts your heart, and you actually do something that helps. In your case, and for anyone else, here are the steps that I suggest and the crime has told about. Number one, believe it. Cognize that you can indeed help with your energy on the planet as a light worker. You either believe you can or you can't. If you believe you can, number two, give compassion and peace or healing to any animal you see who really needs it or group or situation. Note, animals, they feel these things first and foremost. It's in the field. That's evidence of that. Give energy and visualization to the situation that, that caused it. Even give peace to those who you feel are responsible. You got that part? Here's how this works. First, your mind is soothed a bit and your consciousness by actually doing something. Take the time to do it. Second, we believe in long distance healing as light workers and energy work. So the animals feel it and perhaps the situation will start to change because of it. We've seen that too, where consciousness of groups can change because we are praying and we are compassionate about it. As compassionate light workers, this is what we do. But if we are disabled by seeing the situation, we're not going to be very good at this, right? I mean, it's disabling. So understand that we're not helpless, even though we can't actually step in in 3D and fix it. But perhaps we can do something even better. I know this works. And you have to believe that you're helping and not just doing something, because this is what we do. So perhaps this is exactly why you're here. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful answer, Lee, and part of why our heart hurts so much when we see those things is because of something called vulnerability, and children and animals, they're vulnerable, and when that vulnerability is treated in a terrible way, it hurts our heart, and I love one of our guests that we had on our show, Pankaj Gupta, when we talked about those things that you see that might be evil, I loved his explanation because he said that from his culture growing up in India is that you have those who are aware and those who are unaware. And I think that's what it 
boils down to is we have those who are just simply unaware. And I like now that Lee's given us something to do where we can send energy and let's send that to those who are unaware that they gain awareness because that's, that's where the mu- um, magic happens is when we gain awareness of everything that's always been there. All right, enough on that question. I'd like to go to the next question, which is from Donna. Donna is in Massachusetts in the US. And Donna's saying, Cryon tells us that we have the power to heal ourselves And in the circle of 12 meditations, we have healers assisting us. Yet every week, there is a different healer highlighted to help us heal. I want to believe that I can heal myself, but I go to practitioners in hopes that they heal me. Does that take away from my belief in self healing. I've asked that question, Lee, because I, I think mm-hmm. some people are getting confused. I know, it, it can we, like can we heal ourselves? And if so, why are you it's, showing it's almost, us healers? It's almost like an oxymoron. Yes. Heal yourself. Now, here are some healers. Yes. <laughs> Donna, I was waiting for this question because I felt it coming, and I know many need to hear this answer. I want to extend uh, this answer uh, past what you asked, but I also um, feel it'll answer your question. First, If we can heal ourselves, why do we need to see all these healers each week? Well, that's a great one, isn't it? Number two, here's another one. Then, which one of those healers is correct? (laughs) Why are there so many different avenues that these healers talk about to heal ourselves? So, let's talk about the answer to the first part. And I really need for all of you, please, to listen to this. Uh, Question. For those of you trying to heal yourself, how are you doing? How are you doing with self you Are you able to create spontaneous remission yet and just walk away with it healed? Most of us, the answer is no for most of us. Instead, I would say we are working the puzzle. That's what we are doing. I'm included with that, completely included with that. So Crying has given us this program so that light workers all over the world can have and see a tool, perhaps, that they can relate to which will help them for now until they get to the place of full mastery, where they can talk to themselves and walk away healed. Of the thousands that I'm talking to right now, some can actually heal themselves, and many have been doing it for years. Others are just learning it. I would include myself in the learning it. So we present healer after healer in the knowledge that one or two may relate to you, and their processes may relate to you. And you'll say, you know, I've been waiting for this. This relates to me. So it's individual. Secondly, which one is correct? Hey, that's like asking which color is best or what food tastes the best for everyone. That answer doesn't exist because we are all absolutely unique and spectacularly different. We all have different ideas and likes. So this program honors that fact. I will continue to present guests who may have something just for you. There may come a time when we all chase away anything in our bodies that is inappropriate. But until that, we get to that place, until we get to that place, um, we need some tools to help us. Crying tells us that we're all able to heal ourselves at some level. It's like workmen who are building a home. They have the blueprints and the materials. That's us. That's a metaphor uh, for the truth. And we have ourselves. That's the material. But the, we also have uh, the, we find out that the builders, they need power tools to make it happen. So these power tools, the metaphor, are our guests and healers we present to you. You have the ability to heal yourselves, and most of us will find that for now, we also need a little of the power tools to help us do it. So again, those power tools are the processes and the ideas of those that we present to you every single Wednesday. Now, on a personal note, and here's what I want you to know, that Monica and I are personally using the information of several of those that we have met through this very program to help you, to help us do exactly that. So Donna, continue to work on healing yourself and then look for the process or information that you ask for through the program to help you with what you're doing. Again, most of us are not at that level yet where we can easily create the miracles within ourselves that Crying speaks of, but through processes that we are learning here, 
we then can heal ourselves. Nobody is doing it for us. We're doing it ourselves, perhaps with these power tools. Instead, you're being giving, uh, given uh, some wonderful tools here to assist you. So how many are you aware right now? How many of you are aware that the answer to your prayers of healing may very well be with the help of the personalities that you'll meet right here on this program that we are presenting here. I absolutely love that answer, Lee, because you really have explained why we do say you can heal yourself and then present healers with different modalities. And maybe I went in along a little too, uh, too long with my answer, and I could go further, but this is, a, this is a passionate question and a passionate answer. We have seen so many results yes, of this program. absolutely. With, with the people we, we presented, and there's something here for everybody. we got over 70 of these programs yes. now, and it, it rings true to you when you were listening. You go, I needed this. And then others... They just say, well, that's interesting. And then they'll grab onto one that actually will work in their lives. Absolutely. So I think now what I'd like to do is invite you to join me in a very brief meditation before we hear a message from Cryon. And there's really nothing to do except use this time now for yourself. So I invite you to place a hand on your heart and close your eyes. And just allow a few moments for your breathing to soften. Taking in a breath through the nose, releasing it softly through your mouth. And as your body starts to relax, your breathing deepens. You can gently place your hand in your lap You've given a beautiful signal to your body that you are in a safe place. And in this beautiful, safe place, let us now welcome in the message from Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The channel is basic. But it's something you need to hear, and you need to hear it often, all of you. How many of you feel isolated? Isolated, perhaps, in a way that is beyond that which simply is a human in your body, in your civilization, in your, in your society. How many of you feel isolated, perhaps, from everything that's happening? I want to give you some perspective. That isolation is a result, dear ones, from what you've been told. That you feel perhaps that you're not included in some way. There have been many, millions, over these many hundreds of years that have been given in information in a profound way that sticks in your psyche. You grow up being told things and they stick and they can't unstick and you can't unknow them. And most of you have grown up feeling that you are isolated from that which is the creator. This creative source which we talk about, which made the heavens and the earth and the source did that in the process of making the heavens and the earth, I've told you that souls always existed. They were not created separately. Now, this is very difficult for some of you to understand. You'll say, well, didn't that happen in the, in the Garden of Eden when, when God put us here? No, dear ones, that did not. That's another story. But that particular story is when you got your soul, when the human race itself got that soul, which is eternal. That soul existed, always did. That soul existed before there was time. If I said it always was and always will be, you have trouble with that, just in general. Humans in general look at everything, Linearly, 
everything must have a start, a beginning, everything. And everything that you look at is as simple as a, as a piece of string. It has a beginning and an end. It has to. And the string has a length. It has to. That's the 3D of you. But if we say to you, in a multidimensional world, when you speak of the things of God, that there is no beginning, how does that make you feel? You'll say, well, I can't really get, get a grasp on that. You're right. You cannot. But assume that it's correct. And assume this. That this creator who created the heavens and the earth had a situation, if you want to call it, where you were part of it. You were there at the soul level. What if souls were part of God? What if the creative source itself is a collection of souls as well as the beauty and the power and the splendor? Of the creative source itself. What if it's a system. Of love. That's always been. If you're feeling isolated. Or perhaps small. Or you think that there's a separation. Between you and God. I want to put this in perspective. I'm going to give you a truth now. That is beyond anything. That you were ever given. By any doctrine. On the planet. Are you ready? When things were void and there was no universe and God created that which was the universe and God created that which is the galaxies and all the parts and the incredible amount of time that it took and when God created your sun and then when God created your earth in the Genesis area that you read about and you think about what I want to tell you is you were there all of you were there and you watched it you saw the majesty of it the beauty of it you saw the earth being molded for you you knew that you would come into this place with a test of light and dark you knew what you would go through but more than that, you saw it going on all through the galaxies, all through this one. And long before this earth was ready for you, you were participating in that, many of you, in other planets, in other areas. How does that make you feel? I want to tell you how big you are, enormous. And I don't mean your size. I mean your lineage, your history, your beauty, your splendor. Your soul is magnificent, and so are you. And so all of these things, you were there. The story of the Garden of Eden, of Adam and Eve, is a metaphor, dear ones. It's not that far off. That scripture has some actual meaning. And tr because so many times the ancient scriptures, no matter where they are, of the beginnings of things, have elements of truth to them that stick. But most of them are metaphoric. And so when you hear about that, which is the Garden of Eden, that's the planet, of course. You hear about Adam and Eve, that's all men and all women, of course. That's the metaphor. And you hear that an angel came down and imbued both of them or all men and women with something they never had before. It was time for them to receive their soul. The divinity then became something that was part of you. And even your DNA changed at that moment in time. That's when you got your soul. You were standing in line for that one, dear ones. You were there. All of you were there. Not just a few. Not just a few that came to earth. All of you were there. Looking in. Looking down, if you wish to say. Watching the process until it was your turn to come into this planet at whatever time it was to come in. So many of you that I'm talking to are what I would call old souls. I'll say it again. This is a school. The more lifetimes you've had on this planet, 
the more experience you've had. And it's cumulative, and you remember enough of it from lifetime to lifetime that you start understanding how things work. One of the things that carries over from life to life is your spirituality. Those of you who are shamanic, who, who ask the right questions, who learned about the energies and all the things you talk about today, that stuck. It was inside your DNA, inside your memories, at the cave of creation. What I'm saying is you pick it up when you come in your next lifetime and you carry it. Your search for God is innate. It's intuitive. And those of you who did it lifetime after lifetime, you come in and do it again. That sticks. The wisdom that you've learned for certain things, that also sticks. Dear ones, we've told you some amazing differences in this new energy, especially what you carry in with you, and one of them is a new tool. That those who will come in now and those of you leaving and coming in again will never have to learn the things you've learned this lifetime in any form. It all sticks. That's new. That's a new paradigm. That's a new energy. That's what the new magnetics of your earth are about. All of that. So that you're going to have more light in the future than you've ever had, ever had on this planet. That's where this is going. But in all of these things, I tell you, you were there. You are not disconnected from any of these processes. Part of the issue and the plan, the system, you come into the planet and much is hidden. We have even given many channels about the hidden things, if you recall. And part of that is who you are. But I'm here to tell you who you are. The magnificence goes beyond anything you can imagine. I'm, I'm telling you. You saw it all. You saw it all. You are ageless. When you leave this place and go back to that soul level, you will continue forever. There is no end to your existence. There was no beginning at the soul level. And that soul level is becoming more and more available for you to touch. Over a year ago, I told my partner to create the circle of 12, the beginning of touching your soul. And that within that, there could be miraculous healing of all kinds. Healings of, of the fear, perhaps, that you have today, of the uncertainty, not just of your body. To have peace where there is no peace, that is a, a major healing, dear ones. To have joy when you haven't had joy, no reason to have joy, that's a major healing. It's not just corporeal things. It's about you realizing your profundity on the planet. You were there. You were all there. Bigger than you think. More included than you think. With guides and angels and an entourage around you everywhere you walk. Waiting for you to acknowledge them or know that they're there. Or be more aware and more informed about actually who you are. It is a spectacular truth, dear ones. And you were there. All of that. How can you be more aware of this, you might say? How can I feel more included, you might say? Why don't you ask for it? Dear spirit, you might say, help me to understand and feel who I am and the lineage that I carry of humanity. Help me to have peace over these things and know that I'm included and loved dearly. Help me to feel the entourage with me all the time and relax over the things that I am not relaxing about. Help me to understand my eternalness and the light that I carry for the earth. That's a good place to start. You're asking for things that are willingly going to be given to you. We've been, ask, we've been waiting for a lot of you to ask. And that's the truth of the day. That's the biggest truth I could give you today. 
You were there for all of it. I'm crying in love with humanity. And now you know why. There's a lot to love. And so it is. And allow that beautiful energy of cryon to wrap around you, filling every cell of your body with that beautiful message. And very slowly, I invite you to open your eyes if you've had your eyes closed and bring your awareness back into your body. You may even want to rub your hands a little, move your shoulders. And now that you're fully present in your body, it gives us so much pleasure to be able to move into this next part of the program where we're going to be joined by two guests. And we have joining us David Feinstein and Donna Eden. And I just want to make sure, Donna and David, are you there? Yes, we yes, yes, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> they are there and they are here and they are right in your lounge room with you. It's Wonderful. a double header. We could say two for one deal, David. <laughs> it is a two for one deal. Actually, it's a four for one deal because there's four of that's, us. That's true, there is. <laughs> well, let me, let's, uh, let's get going here. So we would love just to say of these two guests today, I'm going to let Monica introduce Donna. Yes, indeed. So for nearly four decades, Donna Eden has been teaching people how to work with the body's energy system to reclaim their health and natural vitality. Donna is among the world's most sought after, most joyous, most authoritative spokesperson for energy medicine. Her abilities as a healer are legendary and she's taught more than 100,000 people worldwide, both lay people and professionals, how they can understand their body as an energy system. And you can study with her through videos, through DVDs, through books and other home study resources. Now, able to see clairvoyantly since childhood, she sees the body's subtle energies. But she not only works with those energies to further health, happiness and vitality, but she's made a career of teaching people who don't see energies how to work with them joyfully and effectively. That's remarkable. <laughs> David Feinstein, PhD, a clinical psychologist pioneer in developing innovative therapeutic approaches, leading to nine national awards for his books and consciousness and, of, uh, consciousness and healing. He and his wife, Donna Eden, have built the world's largest and most vibrant organization teaching energy medicine. There it is again, that word. You're going to hear more about that. Their latest award-winning book, The Energies of Love, achieved bestseller status on New York Times relationship list. David has served on the um, faculties of John Hopkins University School of Medicine, Antioch College, and the California School of Professional Psychology. David has received numerous awards for outstanding academic work, and as a licensed psychologist, he has contributed more than 100 articles to the professional literature in his field. Wow, folks, we are so pleased to have both of you. You're both kind of like doing your thing. You're giants <laughs> when it comes to uh, all of the teaching. This is, this is called Healing Wednesday, and I'm sure that uh, you've got a lot to talk about. Let's, let's start with how did this happen? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> well, this, this began because, because I was very sick. Um, I had multiple sclerosis when I was young. And uh, from the time I was 16 till the time I was about 30, I, I had multiple sclerosis. And it was getting worse and worse and worse. And, um, and I went to see five different specialists because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't walking much anymore. And I was told that there was nothing anybody could do for me because all my organs were breaking down. Mm. And, and something amazing happened to me. Um, I, when the, that last doctor said this to me, 
I, I did not feel frightened. I, nothing. It was like some kind of lightning struck me and I knew I was going to be well, and I knew I was going to do it. And, um, <laughs> and so I, on that day I went home and I just, I knew energy, but I'd never used it for healing. And I went home and I just put one hand on my knee and one hand up towards my thigh and I held them there for about three minutes. And, and, and in that time I could see and feel the energy moving at, uh, over my thighs. And I had not been able to feel or see energy or, or my legs just didn't work in my thigh area. So I, I just knew, well, I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to, I'm going to make energy move all over me and I'm going to get well. And that's how it all began. And once I was, uh, once, oh, I, in the beginning, when, when I did start getting better, I, it really wasn't the multiple sclerosis that was getting healed at first. First, all my allergies to wheat and grains went away. And then, let's see, I, uh, what was the, oh, I, I had asthma. My asthma went away. I had all these different things occur, and I could eat foods I never could eat before in my life. And, and, and then the multiple sclerosis went away. And when it was gone, I wanted to share it with everybody under the sun. I just wanted people to know that whatever were their ailments, they could get well and they could get better. And so I became probably a little obnoxious in the beginning because I wanted to share it with everybody. And But it's still my great, great joy. I love it. I love sharing it. Um, was, this be, was this before you um, met David or? Yes, it was. Okay. It was before I met David. And, and David was quite a, uh, a challenge for me because he, he does come from the left brain world of science. And so he, uh, he, he, it took him a while to believe me, but he, he, he eventually did. Well, she was quite a challenge for me, but um, <laughs> when, when I had some preparation because when I was in the medical school at Hopkins, I was in the department of psychiatry and one of the first jobs I had was to look at alternative therapies, to look at the therapeutic innovations that were happening. And so I, um, I interviewed the founders of 46 different systems. At the time, there were about 200 new therapies. And so I was really able to ask tough questions. I was able to um, really, really come from a skeptical um, viewpoint at these new therapies and um i found out that there was a lot of fluff there was a lot of old wine and new skins but there was also some genuine innovation and so when i met donna i had that headset and that experience and i was able to ask her really tough questions and what happened was she was able to answer them in ways that were quite credible now she sees energy which i don't but uh, basically, her answers were very empirical. Empirical means based on observation and experimentation. So she'd have someone on her table, she'd look at their energy, she'd see where they're blocked, and then she'd do something to unblock it or to get that energy into a flow. And, and maybe what she did was to trace a meridian. And maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. So she'd see, okay, that didn't work. Well, maybe it's in the chakra. So she'd work with the chakra. And maybe that worked, maybe that didn't. If that didn't work, she'd look at, it, okay, well, the triple warmer that um, keeps, uh, maintains habits, maybe that's keeping this from changing. So she'd experiment with that. And then finally, something would really work. So that was, that was how she helped, healed herself was by doing that kind of experimentation on her own body. And she was, you know, she, I, I met her right after she had really overcome her MS, but mm. she still had some symptoms. And, well, and, but it was really serious MS. She was told, she, her organs were breaking down. She had a heart attack when she was 27. And um, the five different specialists told her to get her affairs into order because they doubted that she had two more years to live. But she um, also had two 
young girls and she was determined to bring them up. And <laughs> so that, um, that, that with that motivation and, and that passion and that ability to really see her energies and work with them um, led to something that now has touched a lot of people's lives because um, we've trained about 1,600 people in her method at the certification level, and they are working with thousands of people every month and, um, and really making a difference. So, so, I, so the answer to your original question, how did we get into it? Donna got into it by healing herself. I got into it through marriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's a beautiful this marriage. This is so intriguing. So <laughs> yeah. the next question then is, um, you're teaching this and it's, it's what you do. What is energy medicine? Oh, well, first of all, energy is the language your body speaks in. Every time you move and every time you're animated in any way, that's energy moving you. And when you feel fabulous, that's energy. When you feel rotten, that's energy. And you can learn if you if you're feeling bad, there are really easy tools you can use to move that energy to make you feel better or to uh, get over a cold or get over anything or uh, get your vitality back if you've lost it or, um, uh, well, anything and everything, any way you need to have energy work for you. Or maybe how about just your brain work better? I mean, energy travels everywhere and, and your body valiantly wants to be healthy and healed. So it's once you learn these tools, I mean, it begins to thrill you how it all works. And after 40 some years doing this, I still am that thrilled. I'm still so excited about it because, because it, it is mind boggling how your body already knows how to heal and you just got to get on board. Of course, that was the question I was asking Donna was, well, what do you mean by energy? Because energy, you know, in physics, that's the ability to do work and um, and what I found out was that she's talking about a different kind of energy. She's talking about an energy that carries information, an energy that has intelligence. Just as your brain has memory, your energies have, have memory, and those memories are really significant for health and healing. So in energy medicine, you have the conventional understanding of energy, that is electrical signals move all through your body. That's how you walk, how you talk, how you think, how you breathe. There are energy fields that are in every organ. Um, so the heart has an energy field. The pancreas has an energy field. That's all measurable. That's all really well understood. There are brain waves that are measurable energies that are understood. But energy medicine doesn't stop there. It also works with subtle energies that are, um, you know, Donna sees these subtle energies through her eyes, which is amazing to me still after 45 years together. He really but, can't get away with much because I can see it in his energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very dangerous for a couple. Yeah. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> if I'm attracted to somebody, she knows it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I love what you said is that the body wants to heal. Yes, and does. that is so true. We have we talk about our innate, which is ready for our instructions. Mm -hmm. And it's just we've forgotten how to communicate with our own body. So yes. I would love you to just share some of those things where you said uh, to move through a cold or to move into vitality, is there something that you can share with us to oh, do gosh, that? There's so much. In fact, in fact, uh, every Wednesday, the Wednesday, the Wednesday Energy Minute, <laughs> my kids and I, and sometimes David, do a one-minute energy exercise that anybody can learn. They can go on and see it. You can go onto YouTube and see them now. Yeah, there's more than 400 of them now because we've been doing it for <laughs> several years. I love and, that. Uh, uh, so, um, gosh, it's so simple. This is so simple. Um, there's so many things. Okay. Put one finger in your belly button. Okay? And push it in and pull it up. And the other finger right here at the third eye. Push in and pull it up. Now, both of them are pull, pulling up, and it may make you want to just take a deep breath in. 
It makes oxygen move, but it also connects up two major meridians, central and governing. And when they connect, and usually that's about enough, but you can go more, they'll connect at the back of your throat and suddenly there's a field, an orbit that goes around your body either way and it's within the aura. So it helps your aura puff out further. But it, it just is a natural protector and it, and, you, and it helps you come back home to yourself if you've kind of lost yourself a little bit. And I mean, that's one of the simplest things I know, but there's a whole lot of things. It's like to know that when you when you take a deep breath in, it is the out breath that's going to help you the most. Mm. And so the, if you just keep breathing out, your parasympathetic nervous system turns on, which calms you, and which is very, very good to turn off the stress levels in your body and so that you do not end up with some stress-related illness. So it's, um, I, okay, here's one uh, for me that helps me. I tend to scramble if I get stressed. And, um, and it used to be, I used to think I would never in a million years teach because if I stood in front of people, I would lose my words. Well, that's just an energy thing. And so I learned to do an exercise. Well, I'll just tell you, <laughs> um, well, I'll do a shorter version. Like if you put your hands out in front, cross your fingers and bring them up like this and then cross your ankles uh -huh. and then breathe in and out slowly. You can keep doing that while I talk a minute. What that does, because energy wants to cross over, this crosses your energy and suddenly you can think again. Your words are at your, at your, uh, right at, at, at your mouth, you know, and you can, you can, you can think, you can talk, you can, um, if you're trying to do a, a, figure out a problem, a math problem, anything, your brain will work better if you just do that exercise. Okay. I'm going to give you one more because it's so important. Everybody rub your hands together and shake your hands off. And, uh, and lay your fingers sidewise over your eyes. Now watch carefully. <laughs> Pay no attention <laughs> to him. Okay. Now take a deep breath into your nose. And as you let your breath out, drag your fingers to your temples. Now take a deep breath in here. Now, one more deep breath and push above your ears and go around behind your ears. Drag your fingers down and just land on your heart chakra. That is called what I call a triple warmer smoothie. Triple warmer is the energy that governs fight or flight or freeze. So when you put your fingers over your eyes, it's over an energy called um, the uh, regulator flow. So this is gonna regulate things in a new way. You come to your temples, these are what are called neurovasculars for triple warmer, and it just calms things down. And then when you go around your ears, that's going backwards on triple warmer, which takes energy out of that flow. Coming down your neck, you're going on your vagus nerve, which is uh, which just brings your, uh, well, it immediately makes stress go away. And then coming to your heart chakra, you're coming home to yourself. That's a great one to do whenever you're stressed. I love it. It really is. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you probably couldn't see me, but I was, I was doing that. And I was thinking of the time I used to work as a ranger in the national parks. And sometimes we would have to go in and rescue animals. And some of the things, if you could just get a blanket to cover their eyes, they would just calm down. Yes. Yes, and it, it so begins to regulate things. Yes, that's it, exactly. It makes complete and perfect sense. So that just makes me wonder, have you done energy medicine with animals? Well, actually, we've got a couple of teachers who, are, who teach classes in how to do it, and I have with animals too, but they're presently teaching classes right now on animals, and, and it works. It's so perfect. I, I, since you said that about over the eyes, I'll tell you another thing. Have you ever found yourself throwing your hand up to your forehead? You know, just, oh, no, oh, my God. You know how we do? <laughs> well, I think that that is something that our ancient ancestors must have done. Because when you get stressed out, you lose blood from your forebrain. It goes into your body for the fight, flight, or freeze response. 
and um and you and and so suddenly you're just muddled and you can't think and you and you don't know what to do but if you put your hand up here your hand is electromagnetic so if you lay your own hand over your forehead it'll draw the blood back up into the forebrain and so that you can think again i want to i want to ask you about your book is is your book have these things there is there is it more relationship yes. oriented yes the book yes has these things in it yes in fact um Gosh, we've over the years we've had people get in touch with us who've just found the book and then want to relate what happened to them. I think one of my favorite memories was three or four years ago, somebody told us to go on to the cystic fibrosis blog and see what's going on. And what it was was a group of people from all over the world who'd had double lung transplants from having cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And they were teaching each other all around the world how to use the book and how to how to help their lungs accept, you know, the new lungs and how to help the energy flow through them and stay well and healthy and and everybody was having wonderful wonderful success. Could you talk about success? Can you tell us um I know you have all kinds of cases and things you can talk about where energy medicine worked and perhaps other treatments didn't help. Oh, well, I, I've got, I do have a lot of those. Um, <laughs> Funny, how do fact, I know that? That, that was me. I, I mean, you, oh, sure. I, I already told my story, but that was me. I was told there was no way out of this because all my organs were breaking down. And what I found was how magical the body is. It's, it's, it's magic and it's science, but it is magic. It's magical science, I guess. <laughs> anyway, it, um, I, and I've worked with people who had cancer, who had heart problems, who had, um, I mean, just, I, I can't think of any thing that I haven't worked on that somebody didn't get either all the way well or much, much better. Wow. And I've had many people who had tumors and could take the tumors away mm. or shrink the tumors so an, an, an inoperable tumor could suddenly be operated on because you were able to shrink it with energy. I mean, the, the body is brilliant and energy is the life force. So, uh, and again, it's what our ancestors I am sure did, you know, long before doctors ever came on the scene. And um, so, Amazing. Mm. David, I want to ask, is there something that really stands out in your mind? Because you really bring through the logic, the analysis, <laughs> the medical the professional, the medical pre yeah. perspective. Yeah. And like you said, experiential, you cannot unsee what you've seen. So what are some of the turning moments for you where you saw something that just blew you wide open? Well, when we were writing the book in around the middle 90s, um, we, um, we got a very nice advance. And so we took our, we cut our practices back to half time. And, we, and I would interview Donna every day every day and I'd ask her the tough questions I asked the people in the Hopkins study and she would have good answers. So that was one thing that started to turn me around, but also just, you know, with 1600 practitioners and we just see the successes. We um, we're just finishing a paper now on um, with case studies of people that had allergies for years and years, debilitating allergies, allergies that would send them to the hospital and um, allergies that would keep them from being able to work. And they weren't able to get relief until they came to Donna's approach to eating energy medicine. And so that, that just, just knowing that we can write papers like that, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that you can count on energy medicine to heal ca cancer, but you can know that there is some um, there's some hope that it's an alternative treatment and that in some cases it will really make a big difference. And Don's going to say that in all cases it will make some difference, <laughs> but um, it will. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I believe that we're all here today because our ancestors did energy medicine. That was what was natural. That's what you did. And um, I don't, I don't think it was unnatural for people to see energy either. I am convinced that 
when when babies are born, they see energy. Um, and, but there is so much to learn in that first year of life that if somebody doesn't keep it alive, it, it'll it'll just go dormant. And um, and we were in a town for 20 years where I got to watch kids grow up who I had uh, worked with when they were little and, and their parents wanted them to be able to see energy. So I said, just keep it alive. Just keep talking about it, whether you see it or not. Keep talking about the colors you see around them or whatever it is. And I got to see kids grow up and see energy when they were adults. And so it was just didn't go dormant. And, and in my work, I've seen many of my teachers who uh, never saw energy, that just because they've been working in energy so long now, more and more senses open up. And seeing sight is one of them. It's just a sense that opens up. How can people find you? How can they learn more about this now? <laughs> uh, well... Oh, a good place to look is on the internet. Look under EdenMethod.com, E-D-E-N Method.com. And a really good next step, you see a tab there for free classes. And there's three free classes there. And um, there's one that's more on a general energy medicine class. So that would be the, a great place to start. And then that leads to more advanced classes. But um, EdenMethod.com. And if, if you're interested in ongoing classes so that you can really get skilled in this, um, there are students all around the world now who teach it. Not students, they're teachers now. And so you can find those on the website also. So I can already hear the question, can I learn this and teach it? Oh, you can. You uh, can learn this so well. In fact, every human being on the planet ought to learn this because because your life will be better and when you feel empowered to take care of your own health or your children's health or or if you've got a a child who is having trouble in school and you just get that energy moving through the right places in the head and they can think better they can they can they can learn what they thought they couldn't learn and um, yeah, there is nothing that this isn't good for. And it's really good for the energies of love as well. <laughs> I love that the simplicity of what you're able to bring to us. Mm -hmm. You just need your body yeah. and right. your, your willingness to learn and discover. That's it. Yes. That's, That's essentially right. all you need. Yeah. And That's right. Right. You don't have to be a practitioner. Yep. You can be your yeah. own ex right. scientific experiment. That's right. <laughs> right now, right. A, lot of, a lot of people are going through fear. Yes. Uh, a lot of anxiety. Um, another lockdown. All these things, jobs, whatever. Tell us what you would, in the last two you minutes know, or so. Here. Yeah. I, you know, we have, I have been teaching for 40 years, something that I call the daily energy routine. And you can find that on our website but and it takes five to seven minutes to do it but you could when you if you're feeling really stressed or anxious if you do those exercises your body itself will start learning new habits so that you uh you don't even move into the anxiety is or fears so much you start moving that energy out and you feel uh, oh it's wonderful i would I cannot imagine living without that daily energy routine. It just makes your energy flow as it's meant to. And we live in a world we didn't evolve to live in. I mean, all of these unnatural energies and toxins in our air and stuff, it protects you from those things. So your body can either throw it off or uh, uh, learn to adapt. And so it's real important. And one thing that... Um for me, 45 years with her as a psychologist, I um, started to learn how to apply energy methods in, for psychological issues like anxiety, which everybody now is experiencing with the way the world is. And there's a whole field called energy psychology, which we haven't talked about today, but um, it's very powerful. It really can make a difference with any kind of with, with PTSD, with any kind of anxiety-related issue, with depression. And um, there's, when I came into the field around 
2000, there was no research at all. Now there's more than 120 clinical trials that really show that it's effective, that it works really fast. And um, there, there's a separate area of our website that is called energypsyched.com, energypsych.com, that will tell your listeners um, about that that area. People know it as EFT or emotional freedom techniques or tapping, but it's all part of energy psychology. Well, thank you both for sharing your energy with us and your joy is infectious. I must I'll say, say. <laughs> that uh, even without learning some of those techniques and the eye yeah. things, <laughs> I think just being in your energy field yeah. is <laughs> filling us up with so much more joy. So <laughs> thank you. I, I just have to throw in a teeny weeny little piece and that is for, for so many people who've lived under stress for so long that they might wonder what happened to their joy? Where did their happiness go? And uh, if you strip away those stress levels of energy, underneath there is an energy system that we call the radiant circuits. And you can turn back your joy, your hope, your sense of awe and wonder and gratitude. All those things begin to turn back on. And, and there are real energy techniques to get them on. Absolutely fantastic. This is, I am this, ready. Is where, this is where I want to say cheer down. <laughs> no, no. This is where and we should we should be all living to try and turn oh each my other God, off. Yes. That's right. Oh. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Well our our conversation with you has reached the end of its allotted time and I could continue for another four hours plus. Oh no. Um, <laughs> But it's Scratch been so delightful. I really want to encourage everyone to go and visit the EdenMethod.com. And we'll be back here in 10 minutes to do the Circle of 12.
Welcome back from the break, everyone. Wasn't that delightful, Donna and David? It was great. I, uh, you know, she's so infectious. Uh, the joy factor is like through the roof. I know. Bo both <laughs> of them are wonderful, but I kept wanting to say, you know, could you be a little more cheerful, Donna? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I actually said, I think I said cheer down, which is probably not you, the best thing I could have said. You did. But, but it was so fun yeah. to, uh, to, especially to, to watch her and so how excited she gets and uh, how positive she is. And we hear the phrase so often, everything is energy, but I my know. goodness, she just takes that to the next level. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you feel the energy coming that off That was a great experience. Yeah, yeah. It really I, was. I, the I really Eden, had fun. The Eden method. I know. The Eden. Uh. And, you know, I think I'm always going to remember that belly button and pulling your, that exercise we yeah, did. That's, yeah. That's so right. many simple things. Yeah. And like running through your eyes. And she's got and a lot of them. A lot of them. As well. That's, that's a, really good. Wonderful advice. Yeah. Really, really good advice. So we're now at that time where we're going to go into the circle of 12. Amazing. Amazing how quickly these evenings go. However, we're going to slow time down now by slowing our breathing. So I invite you to close your eyes and you may even wish to let out a sigh. <sighs> settle into the chair or settle more into the mattress if you're lying down or wherever it is that you find yourself in this moment. Allow the muscles of your body to just relax and feel supported, feel held, feel nurtured. And as you feel that support and that softening of your face, your muscles, allow your breathing to be a little slower Turn your focus within and ask your body, how is your body doing this evening? Is there anything that you need to put your focus on? And is there any message from that area that you're focusing on? And you just need to observe. There's no judgment, just observing. And now we can just say thank you. Thank you to our beautiful body our beautiful body that carries us around on this journey, our beautiful body that supports us in this journey. And so from this place of gratitude and thanks and recognition of the beautiful body we have, let us now give thanks to Cryon for helping us facilitate the connection to our core essence. Thank you, Cryon, for bringing us closer to our core essence. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. This is the Circle of Twelve. There are many of you who have gone on this little journey so many times. And there are always a few who will tune in to this particular channeling, meditation, or whatever you wish to call it. And it'll be the first time that you have then gone to this place, if you want to call it that, that is so different. Dear ones, this particular meditation exercise that we do with you, this circle of 12, has purpose. And the purpose is actually several fold. The first, as we have talked about before, is to go to an area that you don't normally think you can go to. This is a spectacular new energy you find yourself in. And some will say, well, yes, I'm not really sure I like it so far. 
There are so many things that are different. There's so much to learn, perhaps that we are just now learning, some will say. The energy that we speak of now is the energy since 2012. It's an energy that has been predicted on this planet by so many. And then when I got here, dear ones, I told you in 1989 that something was coming and it would not be World War III, that something was coming and it would not be the Armageddon that you all expected or that some of you expected because Scripture said it would be happening. In, instead, you've got something that nobody predicted, in a way, perhaps, that's a new energy, but it's different. And that should tell you that many things have changed, and in that change, there has been positive things as well. Now, perhaps you're not seeing all of those yet, but some of you are beginning to realize that if you're going to get through this and this time and the things that are being presented to you right now, that there is something positive. Some of you are starting to feel, yes, that you have new tools. There are things that the light worker can do that you have not been able to do in an older energy. I spoke a while ago of some of the healers that are beginning to experience new things. They're starting to see things happen, especially in their processes and in their work, in their procedures and in their energy work that they didn't expect. They're seeing more results. They're seeing those who are not just getting healed, but they're seeing those who are becoming healers simply by being healed. Something is different. There are those who've been giving readings, you might say. Those, those who will sense energy in your body. We've just come from one of those. One of your guests. And if you would interview her, I bet she'll tell you that she's seeing better now than before. That she's coming into her own, you might say. And that is what we teach. Dear ones, this circle of 12 is an invitation for you to see something and feel something that is beyond just a meditation. We told you last year when we began the circle of 12 that there are many kinds of reality for the human being. But in this new energy that we speak of, those things which didn't necessarily seem real to you a few years ago, now they can, and now they do. You are multidimensional. You always have been. That never changed. Your DNA is multidimensional. You live in a multidimensional world. All that is around you has these attributes, all of it. And yet... You seem to be stuck in simply four of the dimensions. There are multitudes of dimensions. You seem to want to simply experience four. This is the invitation, this circle of 12, for you to go beyond the four. And in the new energy, you can. And that is more than an invitation. It's something that we tell you is a is a given. Once you do this and once you experience this and it becomes real to you, you can start doing it on your own. You don't need a meditation. You don't really need me to take you there. The invitation also is open to all of you is to repeat these circle of 12 experiences on your own. That is your ability. It's really your lineage. And what we mean by that is You've always has seen this coming. It's always been there. You are multidimensional. Now, here's what I'm talking about. If you haven't heard this before, when we cross that bridge, we enjoy 
a multi-dimensional experience. You are going into a part of you that you have not gone into before unless you do this all the time with me. This bridge we're about to cross is an energy bridge. It bridges the gap between the four-dimensional reality and a multi-dimensional reality. Both are yours. So when you cross into the multi-dimensional you, it's not going to be some fairyland. It's not going to be some wispy thing that you imagine. It's you. It's simply you getting used to becoming a bigger you. You go into a place, if you want to call it that, <laughs> that is multidimensional. Dear ones, I always premise that place with that phrase because there is no such thing as a place in a multidimensional world. It's all energy. These dimensionalities don't feature places. Now that's a difficult one, but we're going to go there now. We're going to give you all manner of metaphors so that you're comfortable. But I want you to see it. I want you to feel it. I want you to be there with me because of what's going to happen. See the bridge in front of you as it's always been there between the known and the unknown. With a little bit of mist at the halfway point when obfuscates what's beyond it. So that you go and it simulates going through the veil. That thing that seems to separate you from so much. But today it separates you from nothing. Let's go together. Let's go right now. Take my hand. Move across that bridge with me as you've done so many times before. To a joyful place, dear ones filled with so much that we have described before, filled with so many that we have described before. This, I'll tell you again, truly is home. This is where you go when you're not on the planet. But now you realize that when you are on the planet, you can go here as well. This is your soul. This is that, that thing that encompasses the divinity of you that expands the divinity of you. It has no barrier, no boundary, this soul of yours, because it belongs to the creative source. It always was and always will be. It's the grandest thing that you have, and you carry it when you're on the planet. Today, what we want you to do is to go into a place, <laughs> not a theater, it's a large room and you go through a door yet again and that door has a name on it that you cannot you cannot read you cannot pronounce it's a beautiful beautiful door and it's just filled with things you didn't expect why that door has a few balloons on it I mean how could that be possible this is your soul there are no balloons in your soul and yet there are and that is for you, dear ones, that as you approach the room you're going to be in, there's noise in that room, a lot of noise. And as you enter that room, suddenly it stops and there's a, a, a breath that becomes uh, one that's taken by there's so many in the room that stop the noise and looking at you. Let me explain what's going to happen right now to you. Last month, the love month. We took you to a room. You laid on a table. And the guides infused you, imbued you with beauty. With healing energy, profound healing energy. You might remember that. With peace. You might remember that. With truth. Truth that awakens you to light. You might remember that and with love. How can you forget that? So all of these episodes of Healing 12 were like lessons where the guides then put into you the various things that you already had but you needed then to have more of. They took the pure you and gave it to you, especially that when they gave you the love. But there's one thing they did not give to you. You might have missed it. 
And you might have then gone back and said, well, I missed the one thing that really I needed the most of. And that's what you do today. You've just walked into a big group of children. And they see you and now it erupts again. They laugh and they applaud. And they're so happy to see you. And as you enter the room, they crowd around you trying to take your hand. They're so pleased to see you. It's hard not to laugh at, at those beautiful children and what they say and what they do and how joyful they are. Look, all of them. And there's so many of them. It's an odd thing to recognize yourself in every single child. Who is this? Who could they be? But right now, they surround you with laughter, laughter. They're pulling upon you and your hands, come this way, come this way. We want to show you this. We have all these drawings that we've made expecting you to be here. We would love to share some time with you. And you go with them willingly. I want to introduce you to joy. And I want to tell you who's giving it to you. Oh, every single one of these children are you. It's your inner child from every lifetime you've ever lived. Those beginning years before the responsibilities, those years before you have anything to worry about, these are you. And in that, they want to share an unbridled joy with you. What would that mean? What would that mean? For you, it needs to go into you because it erases fear. While you're joyful, while you're laughing, laughing, while, while you're giddy, you don't fear much. You have so much peace. Laughter, joy, it erases so many things. It even tends to erase disease. This has been documented, dear ones, and this was missing from last month. But we couldn't not do it. So this is a time when the children surround you. What do you have to say to them at the moment? I think the best thing you could do is say nothing and instead enjoy and laugh and be. And see what those children want to say to you and, and absorb perhaps the inner child of all of your lifetimes. But I don't want you to stop laughing when you leave this place. Dear ones, here's the challenge. This is infectious. It'll go into your cellular structure, all of this laughing, all of these beautiful faces, all of them pulling upon you, and they love you and know you, asking you to play with them and sit with them and do things, all of them together, almost in, in, in one consciousness, in one voice, listening to you and you listening to them, and you laugh and you cry because you're joyful. Here's what I want. I want you to cognize this and take it home with you. I want you to be able to think of this particular metaphor, this circle of 12, every single time you can. When you wake up in the morning to rekindle the inner child and think about all these inner children that are all you in this circle of 12 that all are in your soul. When you leave this circle of 12, dear ones, they don't go away. All of them have always been there in your life. All of them. Can you imagine such a thing when you wake up in the morning hearing the laughter of the child within? Before you go to sleep at night, perhaps, experiencing the laughter of the child within. It's going to change your life. I want you to stay here. Stay and be imbued with joy from the only thing that truly could give it to you, your own inner children, all of the ones that you've experienced all your life and all of those lives before. Stay, stay and laugh. 
stay and have the joy of the inner child. And so it is.